Hey, good afternoon guys. This is Tush coming at you. It's Monday, May the 27th and uh, I've got the week off work. So uh, we are heading up to storage in order to get one of the cars out. I had mentioned that I was going to bring the Alfa Romeo uh, Spider home first, but uh, plans change and uh, I think we're going to bring the 1960 TR3, the Triumph TR3A home Instead, we have a show uh, on the weekend up in Collingwood, Ontario, that we're thinking about going to, and that will be uh, weather dependent. And we also have a few other shows that are coming up, so uh, I'd kind of like to have a Triumph home to be able to uh, drive it a bit and take it to a show uh, if I want to. So I think that's what we're going to do today is uh, move a few cars around. The uh, TR6 has to be moved in order to get the TR3 out that's on uh, rolling jacks, so we'll have to... Uh, pull the TR6 out so we'll see if that starts or not I did bring a booster pack with me and uh, hopefully that should be enough to get it uh, cranked over enough to start to pull out and back in um, I do have a battery charger with me as well uh, with a booster function so it's possible I may need to use that as well I haven't started the cars since last year when I put them away so it's always a uh, hit or miss whether they're gonna start or not so we'll uh, we'll do our best maybe we'll take a little bit of video along the way once we get up there Got the uh, seats loaded in from the, uh, always take the seat bottoms out from the TR3 just in case the uh, mice decide they want to make a nest in the uh, the old horsehair stuffing. So I always have the uh, seat bottoms in the house with me as opposed to it being in storage uh, all winter. So those are in the back seat. So we've got those. We've got the keys. We've got the booster pack and uh, a few other bits and bobs. I've got a wrench, I think, to uh, put the battery cables back on. So hopefully we've got everything we need and we don't have to make a second trip. And uh, I'll just leave the truck up there and retrieve it later and we'll drive the uh, 60 TR3 home. Looking forward to it. See you then. Alright guys, we've got the TR6 uncovered. Yeah, it doesn't look much worse for wear. It does need a good uh, cleaning. I'll just check the oil and that looks good. Uh, I'm going to put the battery on. Anybody want to place any bets as to see whether this will start or not? Again, no charger, hasn't been started. Just been sitting here with the battery off. But it was a pretty cold winter, so uh, I'll be interested to see if it cranks over or not. Um, the battery is fairly new, so uh, it's 50-50, let's say. Anyway, we'll crank the battery on and see if she starts. I should mention the one good thing about the TR6, if you've got an original style fuel pump, it's got a priming lever on the bottom, so if the car's been sitting for a long time, I also install a uh, fuel shutoff valve in my inline, so uh, if I, when I store the car, I run the carbs completely out of fuel. And... Uh, so now, obviously, it would be difficult to get the uh, fuel back up to the carbs and get the, the uh, bowls filled. So priming lever helps to do that. So that uh, gives the car a little bit better chance of starting after a long period of rest. So we'll prime up the, uh, the fuel pump and we'll crank the battery on and we'll see if she turns over. All right, guys, place your bets. All right, good old TR6. Well, happy to hear it running again. I 
definitely needs to be washed. So we'll pull her out in the sun and let it warm up. And then we'll get to moving the uh, ER3 out of its spot after we do a little sweep up. All right, looks like it survived its winter rest okay. Just got to warm it up. Doesn't see any, uh, I don't see any evidence of mice, which is a good thing. It sounds a little exhaust leak in the mid pipe. I mean, this is exhaust is never sealed properly in the middle pipe. So maybe I'll work on that a little bit uh, more once I get this car back out. This car will be going to uh, St. Louis this year uh, to the trials in October, six pack trials. So we'll get this up and uh, running well before then. Not sure whether we'll drive it or trailer it. Either way, I'm gonna get it ready to go. But I think the first thing we'll bring out is the, as I mentioned, this will be the easiest thing to bring out today, obviously, since it's ready to go pretty much. But uh, I think we'll bring the 60 TR3 home first and then we'll bring this out a little bit later on. All right, that's it for now. Let's let it warm up. All right, so we've got the, uh, the TR8 slumbering over here and we've got the Alpha here. So uh, the Alpha's gonna wait for a bit. The TR8, uh, if you haven't watched any of my videos on the TR8, that's another restoration project down the line. So we'll get to that eventually, can't wait. Um, but anyway, um, we're gonna give this floor a good sweep out before we pull the uh, TR3 out and see if that starts. All right, all right, there's the other old gal. Just uh, moved out from her uh, winter storage spot. She's looking good. Again, just a little dirty. So we'll get her off the stands and see if she'll fire up. I'm sure she will, but uh, I'll bring you back when we get to that point. All right, we've done our oil checks and uh, got the fuel turned on. We've got the uh, fuel primed. So I think we're about ready to give her a start. I've got work texting me. Oh. Here we go. Hope I brought the right keys. So far so good. Neutral. Full choke. We got a ignition light at least. You ready? Zippo. That's kind of odd. Uh, let me try to move the car a little bit. We'll come back. Well, I got nothing on the starter switch, but I pushed the uh, solenoid button and uh, she came to life. So, uh, no issues with cranking. So, not sure what's going on with the starter button. Maybe just some contacts need to be cleaned up. Anyway, she's running again. Sounds good right off the bat. Check oil pressure. Good oil pressure. Just choke in a bit. Beautiful. Love this car. All right, we'll come back. All right, good to see you out in the sun again as well. So it looks good. Not sure it's not why it's not starting on the starter. Like I said, just could be the contacts. We'll figure that out when we get home. So we've got the TR6 back in the uh, storage. We'll just uh, load up the car with a few tools and we'll be on our way. Maybe we'll take a little bit of uh, footage on the uh, back roads on the way home. That's it for now guys. See you in a bit. What a beautiful day and I love this car. Perfect little road for it. Blue skies. driving it. Order coming up. Turning you off. Celebration of life, Tush. For all you people that miss less.
It's a here's, celebration here, of life and springs here. here. Here's an update from Les. Celebration <laughs> of life and it's spring today. It's raining. All right. We're going to go and have some fun with his uh, Capri today. <laughs> we'll be back in a bit. All right. So we're up at Les's and... Oh, we're up at Les's, and uh, if you remember the old uh, yellow Capri, I think this is like an 81 or an 82 Mark III. Anyway, this is the right-hand drive car. Uh, Les has started uh, stripping it down, pulled the sunroof out of it. Um, this sunroof was all uh, bondoed in, so pulled the sunroof out, uh, well, got all the bondo taken out, started stripping it. It's got the interior stripped. Um, what he's going to do now is he's got a buddy of his coming up uh, who's going to rebuild the engine for him. So um, I'm just going to put it on the trailer and take it into uh, this guy's shop in uh, Port Perry, Ontario. So we've got a bit of a drive ahead of us tonight. In the rain, it's kind of a crappy day. It is going to be crappy for the next few days. So anyway, hopefully he's got a tarp for the uh, sunroof. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll uh, give you some shots along the way once we get her up in the trailer. All right, we got the Capri up on the trailer and uh, we got her all strapped down. We're just about ready to head to Port Perry. Hopefully she doesn't rain. Les has decided he wants to air the car out. So we've got all the windows open. So if we run into a storm, I assume that we're gonna be pulling over real quick and fumbling to put the uh, windows and sunroof up. So anyway. So we'll see what it needs for uh, engine. I'm thinking it just might need rings and maybe some uh, Head work done, but we will see once we get into it. We'll uh, probably make a visit when we get the engine pulled out of it. I think we're going to pull the engine anyway. All right, guys, welcome back. Thursday, May the 30th, and we've got a Triumph marking its territory back in the garage. Well, we had it in the garage. We've got the TR3 just out in the driveway and covered because we are going to go back into working on the 68 TR250 project. And we're going to start getting into some uh, some body work again. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this uh, driver's side rear fender. We're going to strip the remaining uh, paint off of it, the remaining factory paint. There's a few uh, areas that need to be cleaned up. Just uh, probably with a little uh, fiber disc, we'll just clean off the rest of the original paint there and on the uh, inner wheel wells. And then uh, we'll probably scratch it up with some 80 grit on a DA. We'll do a little body work and then we'll do some epoxy priming. I, as I'd mentioned, I need to get this uh, bare metal into epoxy primer before it gets really humid out here because it's just going to flash rust over the summer. So the intent is to, uh, to get this into epoxy primer within the next uh, couple of weeks anyway. And uh, I thought I would get out here today and start on that project while I can, while I have a little bit of time. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll break out the work table, we'll take that rear fender off and we'll start on that one first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, angle die grinder and just with this little uh, fiber disc on here, let me show you what that looks like. So, just we don't want to go too aggressive so we'll just go with the, uh, the die grinder and the fiber disc to start getting some of the remnants of that old paint off. So here we go. Yeah, we're making pretty good progress on the fender. We've got it uh, pretty much scratched down with a uh, 80 grit and a DA now. You can probably see that dent a little bit uh, clearer now that I've uh, DA'd over it. You can see that slight depression. I've hammered it out from the back a little bit. So just a little tiny bit of filler there will be quite required. I see I've got another little dent here. You can see this low spot here where this paint's not coming off. So I've got a little dent here just on the uh, edge of the fender. And the rest of it looks pretty good. A little bit more paint to clean up down here. And I think I'm going to break out the uh, sandblaster, the little uh, handheld sandblaster, just to do this flange down here, a little rusty, and just a little bit in the middle here. And then I think I'll do the face of this. It's a little bit difficult to get a grinder in there. So I think what we'll do is we'll just do the face of this with the small uh, handheld sandblaster and see how that comes up. 
So that'll be the next step. All right, I thought I'd give you a quick shot of this sandblasting. So I'm just using this uh, sandblasting style gun. It's very cheap. I think it was 20 bucks at my local uh, Princess Auto on sale. I think you can get these from Harbor Freight. They work pretty well for this kind of application. I just use my leftover media from my blasting cabinet, the stuff that's broken down a little bit. So it seems to work pretty well. Anyway, here we go. See if this works. See that works pretty well. I'm gonna move you a little back a little bit here. Just blasting my camera. And need to refill. So you get the point. Okay, as you can see, those flanges came up pretty nice all the way along. Probably do a little bit more blasting here just to get a little bit of surface rust off here before we go ahead and prime it. That looks pretty good all the way along, and this flange uh, cleaned up nicely as well. So we're good to go there. So we're getting pretty close, getting this fender ready. And again, I think what I'll do is I'll do my little bit of body work here. Before I go ahead and epoxy prime it, I prefer to do my body work on bare metal. So I think we'll do a little scratch coat there, fix this little area here, and then we'll fix the rest of the issues once we find them after we do a little bit of uh, block sanding. I'm sure we'll see a little bit more issues after we've got the epoxy and the high build primer on, but for the most part, all I can see on this fender is this little area here and that spot there. So that's it for now. We'll come right. back. Filler time. We've got the panel nicely uh, dressed and cleaned down, so we've got... Uh, three areas that we're going to fill right now. So we've got our Bondo out and our mixing board. So we'll go to town, fill those up, sand them down, and uh, get this fender ready to go into epoxy. Now this is going to be pretty boring material for a video, but uh, anyway, there she is. There's those three spots filled and sanded. So looking good. So I'm calling this fender now good for epoxy. So uh, we'll move on to Probably working on the either the front fender or the door on this side. We'll probably work on one side at a time. So maybe we'll uh, pop off the front fender and we'll give that a bit of uh, attention. All right, I thought I'd give you a quick general overview of the look of this fender before we start with it. So obviously we've got some rust to deal with here along the flange. This piece in here was replaced earlier on. Looks like we have an extra hole here so we might have to have a look and see which one of these needs to be filled up. So we've got to repair a few little uh, bits here on the flange where they've broken through. It should be a solid piece like this one. But you can see that's gone through and gone through there. Uh, a little bit of surface rust here to get rid of on the inside. We need to weld solid our little flange here for our vent tube. Um, I haven't finished that up yet. Uh, this bottom of this fender was replaced so uh, that's looking okay. We might just do a little bit more finish welding here. I can see there's a bit of area where I didn't get uh, very good penetration so we'll probably go back and have a look at that. Maybe smooth a bit of uh, weld down here but other than that looks pretty good. My welding was pretty good on the uh, the flange for the tubes all the way around so that looks good. Again just need to finish up this flange up top and uh, give that a quick weld. So we'll flip it over and have a look on the outside. So definitely have some body work to do on the exterior of this fender. Uh, quite a bit of a small dents up in this area there was some heavy rust pitting here that uh, we'd sandblasted, but we're going to have to put some filler over top of that. We put a patch in here, we have to do some filler over that. Uh, 
there's a bit of filler, more filler required. There's going to be some filler required around where we put the, the uh, cut the vents in, but uh, shouldn't be too much there. And then I see a bit more of an issue here is a bit of a dent here and a few other things up on the top here where there's a few small dents as well. So quite a bit of body work required to this fender. It's by far the worst of the four that are on the car. The three, uh, the two rears and the front passenger side were in excellent condition. This one not so good. Uh, this came off the same fender uh, or the same car as this one did and this one's pretty much worse for wear as well but uh, obviously came off a British Racing Green car at some point uh, this car came to me with fiberglass fenders on it so whatever we put on here is going to be better than fiberglass so anyway we'll get to it and uh, we'll probably do that welding first and then we'll uh, start working on uh, cleaning this fender up a little bit and then we'll do some body work all right, we cleaned that weld up from the back side and you can see through the front side we've got uh, good penetration now all the way to the front so we'll clean that up um, we also cleaned up that little uh, area would need to be welded under there so we'll do a little body work there so i think what we'll do now is we'll clean up the rest of the fender we'll get rid of the rest of this paint we'll get the 80 grit out and we'll start scrubbing up the outside it's pretty it's starting to flash rust in little areas and it's got a bunch of uh overspray from uh, I think from the bike project it's got some primer overspray on it so we'll just clean that up and uh, make any other repairs that we need to. All right guys I believe we've done all our welding and grinding repairs we did a little hole repair here to ground that down a little bit obviously we did that bottom um, new piece of uh, bottom of the fender that's all welded solid now we've done this and ground this down where that was uh, disconnected We've done these uh, two pieces here that we're uh, needing repair, so those are done. Put a few more tacks up here on this uh, closing piece, and uh, I think that was about it as far as the repairs were concerned. So if we'll break the, uh, break the sandblaster out and we'll uh, sandblast this flange here, and we'll do a little work just on the inside here to clean that up, up a little bit, and uh, we'll see where we get to. That'll probably be it for the night. Anyway, we'll come back with some progress updates. All right, so we uh, sandblasted that whole flange and got that looking pretty good. I've just sprayed it now with rust converter. I also sandblasted the interior of this panel and sprayed that with rust converter. And I sprayed this flange with a rust converter, although we're going to actually probably wire brush this or actually sandblast this uh, flange anyway. So anyway, that's all done. Uh, I think we're going to have a bit of a break. It's just coming up to 7.15, so we'll have a bit of a break. And uh, we'll get back out here and then clean up the garage so we can get the TR3 back in uh, by the end of the night. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll let the uh, rust converter dry. All right, guys, just coming up to 8 o'clock, and uh, we're just about to tear things down for the night. And that's the uh, problem with having a car home, is you got to set everything up and tear everything down to uh, work on your project, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway, we're going to tear it down a little bit early. we got the Raptors on tonight. Raptors are in the uh, NBA Finals. It's a big first game tonight, so uh, go Raptors. Anyway, we'll clean this up. We'll go in. We'll get out here tomorrow. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, it's Friday the 31st of May. Back on the TR250 project this morning. Actually, it's about 12 noon. So we're going to continue working on the uh, driver's side front fender, and we're going to do some filler work. Uh, here is a dent here, and some dents up in here. There's a dent up here, and a little bit of body work to do around the, uh, the vent opening. So we're going to start in this area first and then we'll move to a different area, but we'll uh, tackle this area first. So we'll get the filler out. We've got the panel cleaned down and uh, she's ready to go. So we'll break out the filler. All right, first coat of filler is done. We're just about to knock it down with some 40 grit and then uh, drop down to 80 grit. We did a little bit of work here on the front as well, at least the first coat. We know we're gonna need more coats over here, but uh, we did a first quick coat and we'll let that dry while we work on this area over here. So we'll go ahead and get sanding. Alright guys, we're getting there on the uh, main body of the panel. Uh, it's not too bad. It's feeling pretty good. Uh, we are starting to work on uh, the nose, which I've got not too bad, but I can still feel a little bit of uh, waviness in this area here. And there's definitely some issues here where I put a quick skim coat. We're going to have to do another little coat here. So uh, we're getting there. It's just taking a while. I like said this fender is in not the greatest shape, so trying to make it better. All right, we'll be back. All right, we mounted the fender back on the car just to be able to get to the top of the fender where we have a couple of dents to contend with. One here, one here, 
And I think there's a little something something going on down here. Other than that, it looks not too bad. So we'll uh, fix those dents up top. And then we'll uh, see what we're left with. All right, guys, the uh, front driver's side fender is now done as far as, as far as I'm gonna go before I go to epoxy. And as I mentioned, we'll probably block the epoxy down and find uh, any more small imperfection. I'm just doing the major imperfections that I see right now as best I can anyway. And hopefully um, there won't be too many minor imperfections that we have to fix later. But we'll do that over top of the epoxy versus uh, direct to metal. So I'm kind of doing a uh, new school, old school or old school, new school approach. I still haven't uh, got myself to uh, do most of my body work over top of the epoxy. I prefer just to do it to bare metal, but we'll uh, do small repairs over epoxy if required. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll move on to the door, I guess. All right, guys, we got the door off, and uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to swap the hinges out. Uh, these hinges have a lot of uh, a lot of play in them, as you can probably see there. And I've got a uh, rebushed set over here that we're going to install so uh, we'll do that the door is in pretty good condition overall um, I do have a broken uh, door check strap here I'm probably just gonna weld a washer on the bottom to fix this so we'll do that and other than that it just needs a good uh, clean up and a scrub down and a sand down before we get it into epoxy but what we're gonna do first like I said is uh, we're gonna change those hinges out all I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe a mark around the current hinge because we know that we can get the uh, door to line up currently in the hinge position where they're at. Although that's going to change slightly anyway now that we've got tighter hinges. So uh, anyway, I'm going to put the hinges back in the same relative location that they came off and then we'll uh, play around and adjust them as required once we get it back on the car. Alright, that's it for now. Well, sometimes things just don't work out. These were uh, an eBay purchase and I got taken as I've just discovered well not really taken but uh, it's not exactly a stock replacement so I was just noticing that these holes here which on the other hinges are threaded these are not threaded so I figured okay well I'll just get the tap out and we'll, uh, we'll thread those up well the problem is here's the bolt and basically the threads are going to be way too big if I had to step up to the next, uh, the next tap to uh, thread this then I'd have to get all new hardware which I'm not willing to do so these are basically junk if I had a press I'd probably attempt to press out the pins and just replace the whole uh, back piece the whole threaded piece but I don't have a press and I don't know how easily these come apart so anyway these will probably go in the spares pile um, like I said I could probably use them if I really really had to if I wanted to change the hardware out which I don't want to do so anyway guess we're in the market for some new hinges we'll take these off all right guys we finished this little uh, tab here so I actually welded a washer on the top because the top piece was starting to oval out a little bit. And I welded a washer on the bottom and then I drilled a hole through. So we're good to go now as far as the uh, door check strap holder is uh, concerned. The door shouldn't fly open and put a big crease in the fender. Looking a little dodgy in here. I've got the wire brush out just cleaning things up and this is all Bondo in here. And I'm assuming there's going to be a big gaping hole here once I take this chunk of Bondo out. So anyway, can't leave it. So we'll go ahead and we'll continue on. So I'll give you a quick shot of that before I make a big hole. Well, I guess I should expect nothing less from this car. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Anyway, there's the, uh, if you can zoom back a little bit here, you can see where I'm looking at, at the uh, front of the door, just above the uh, top hinge point. Here's where the mirror attaches and we have quite a big serious rot problem here that was just filled over with Bondo nicely. So obviously we're not going to leave that like that. Um, so so much for the uh, nice easy body work on this door so we're going to have to do some uh, serious cutting and welding to repair this. 
So that's not going to happen tonight, I don't think. I uh, might attempt to cut the patch out. It's getting late though and got to do the garage cleanup thing and move cars back in and put tables away, etc. As per usual. So uh, I think this may wait for another day. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll help try and get back out here tomorrow. It's supposed to rain tomorrow so I'm not sure how this is going to work. Having a car home can't actually pull it out in the rain or I don't want to pull it out in the rain so we might be restricted to a little corner over there or something like that. So anyway we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching. Well sorry for the compressor noise but uh, we're going to go ahead and start cutting and you can see my black outline of where I'm going to cut. Now that rusty bit in behind there apparently looks to be a stock That's a little bit better. So it's a stock stiffener piece in behind um, the top layer of metal. So I'm going to try not to cut through. We're going to start by cutting the bottom uh, area first and see if we're going to peel away that metal. It's hard to believe where they get Bondo in here. There's Bondo right there and Bondo up in there. So anyway, let's start cutting and see where we get to. Not willing to give in just yet for tonight anyway. I still have a little patience left. Okay, guys. So there you can see the underlying metal. There's the bits that came out. So we'll take the wire brush and see how we can get this cleaned up. And then uh, if it cleans up okay, we'll hit it with rust converter. I'm not worried about this little hole up here. I'll fix that afterwards. I'm more, to, more worried about this large patch here to begin with. So uh, anyway, we'll see if we can clean this uh, underlying metal up and then we'll go from there. Actually, it looks like a perfect area for the sandblaster, so I think what we'll do is we'll dig the sandblaster out. The metal, metal seems to be pretty solid uh, behind here, so that's a good thing at least, just a little rusty. So like I said, we'll uh, maybe bring the sandblaster into use one more time. And uh, I'm running out of media, but uh, we've got enough to do this area anyway, so maybe we'll do that before we lose the light entirely. I think it must be getting close to uh, 9 o'clock here, so... We'll do one more little job before I go in. <laughs> really, I mean it this time. <laughs> Les, came, Les came came to visit me and give me a hug. Yeah, I'm gonna get him an ice cream cone. Yeah, I need an ice cream cone. I haven't had dinner yet. Anyway, there's what it looks like after a quick uh, sandblast. It did get some of the uh, the rust uh, off of it, um, but not completely. So we'll uh, hit it with a bit of a wire brush. We're gonna also do a rust uh, converter on there. But that's not looking too, too bad. Again, we still got to fix this area over here, but we'll do that at a later date. And there's a hole up the top here that needs to be filled. I'm sure that's going to blow out into a bigger hole. Anyway, we should be able to make...